against Duke in their last game. Georgia Tech's last game was Saturday, as Mike mentioned, against Duke. 86 43, the final there. And Louisville also played Saturday at Notre Dame. That was a loss, 76 62. We talked to Josh Pastner, and, uh, you know, he said they've, they've had a couple of good days of practice right after that. They talked things out after that. And, I mean, you absorb that type of loss, and they can. Uh, Goes right to your soul, Tom. I will say both teams had very spirited shoot-arounds today, more like practices, and went over multiple offensive and defensive sets. We'll see if they can put those to work tonight. Sturdivant, Georgia Tech with the traveling gray tonight. Shot clock's at 10. Coleman trying to weave his way. Franklin, a little bit of a fall away, bounces out. Withers, the veteran with the rebound. Yeah, I think if, uh, for both of these teams, they're going to try to make the other one prove themselves from the outside. It's going to be pretty tough to get into the paint area. Ellis leads the way in scoring, number three in white, black, and red. 17.3 points per game. Withers fires and misses. Tapped around, almost got it, and Ellis did. Ellis caught in the air and Georgia Tech takes it back. Yeah, if there's one knock on him and this team in general turns the ball over so much and Ellis sometimes gets himself in trouble up in the air. Coleman missed the three, Withers with another rebound. That's the one advantage that Georgia Tech will have in this game. Very good at taking care of the basketball and neither one of these teams are outstanding shooting teams, but uh, Georgia Tech does not have many self-inflicted wounds. Louisville 41% as a team this season from the floor. Shot clock down to six and an offensive foul along the baseline. And that was Trainer trying to make a move. Franklin absorbing the contact. Kenny Payne is the first year head coach and a former teammate of my broadcast partner tonight, Mike Jaminski, and on a national championship team here at Louisville. He knows all about the tradition and excellence of this program. Yep, they stayed in the family with that hire and uh, hoping things that settle down. Certainly better days ahead for this Louisville program with him on the bench. Sturdivant behind the line missed the three and Withers who averages about five boards per game already has three in this game. Just about at three wing positions Louisville has got a size advantage. That's Withers with a difficult shot hit the floor and he'll earn free throws. Across the way for Georgia Tech, its head coach, Josh Pastor, seventh season. A couple of years ago, champs at the ACC tournament, Mike. Going back to Greensboro this year. Yes, sir. Win that. And, uh, this is, you know, again, we talk about advantages where these teams, you know, may have an edge. Louisville gets to the free throw line a lot more than Georgia Tech does. So if they can make that an ally tonight, it'll help the cause. Withers is 77% from the line this season. Cardinals as a team, that's 71% near the bottom of the conference. Always room for improvement, and Withers and his teammates, they've been practicing those free throws. Yeah, and a little full court pressure too here early on. Don't know that they're necessarily going for the steal here. They retreat back, just want to take some time off the clock and uh, upset Georgia Tech's rhythm. Georgia Tech is 8 and 13 overall. They shot just 30 percent and lost to Duke. Kelly, five feet behind the line, hits the front rim. Up top with a rebound, Mike James. Ellis on the run. Coleman hustle back. Great play from behind, not conceding the layup. Coleman trying to euro step his way to the rim. Curry pulled it in. You know, it's funny, both of these teams, they're not really up-tempo all the time, but uh, getting up and down the floor here early. Trainer lines it up. Howard got the rebound for Georgia Tech. One and five away from Atlanta, looking for their first ACC road win. They defeated Miami at home. And that's Sturdivant for three. Nice shot. Not a great three-point shooter, 29%, but uh, had an open look at it. Good start for him. I don't think, you know, to go back and be positive, look at that Miami game tape and see how they played. Get some good vibes from that. Finished that game on an 11-0 run to close out the Canes. 
Taylor Willard's been very aggressive looking for his offense here early. Miles Kelly on the handle. I'd like to see him try to get something at the rim. They've got a taller cover on him. James is just he's going to be really good. Kelly, the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, elevates over the defenders for two. Yeah, he needed to hit that and see some early success. Um, we talked about it, what his shooting has been. 17 of 58 in the last five, so really struggling. A good start. Ellis distributes. Rattles out for trainer. That was halfway down. I thought Ellis could have finished at the rim that time. Kelly only had five points against Duke, was two of nine from the floor. And just to further your point, Mike, he's five of his last 27 on three-point attempts. Howard, too strong, Curry the rebound. Will run up and down this court all night, G-Man. James thought about the jumper, drives into traffic and puts it off the glass. 6-5, he can make that play, and recently you have to honor his three-point shot, really developing that, but uh, very good off the take as well. He was the leading scorer in the losing effort at Notre Dame on Saturday with 14 points. Mike James was 6 of 8 from the floor and canned a couple of threes against the Irish. This is Kelly, wants a three, and he hits it. Uh, and, uh, you know, Louisville is challenging Georgia Tech to shoot from the perimeter so far. The Yellow Jackets have answered that call two of five now from three. Kelly's now made 48 threes this season for Georgia Tech, and he leads a team in that category. And Georgia Tech desperately needs him to get hot. We talked about his struggles in the open. Ellis deep into the shot clock. Curry runs it down in the corner. Sidney Curry, a formidable figure on the inside, Mike. 6'8", 270 for the senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Shot clock down to seven. Had a 19 rebound game earlier, and that's Al Ellis right there. That's what they need him. I think he needs to score here early, Tom, give them some confidence, and then build on his assist numbers afterwards. Comes from a great family, parents Tasha and Albert. We ran into them at the airport on the way here to Louisville. Big Mike Jaminski fans. <laughs> yeah, it was big. In fact, he, he Elbert was, called you Mr. Jaminski, yeah, right? Yeah, that was a little too <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> But he, they were very gracious. We had a nice visit with them. Former professional football player for the Carolina Panthers. Curry missed it. Here comes Georgia Tech in the gray. <laughs> Kelly. Quick close by James Kelly. Trying to spin it off the top of the backboard. I think he could have gone up on the same side of the rim that time. Made it difficult for himself. Ellis has a lane. Two Score points. the basket. Goal-tending violation on Howard for Georgia Tech. Brought to you by your local Ford dealer with Mike Jaminski. Yeah, for Georgia Tech, Tom, they've got to avoid extended runs by the opposition against Duke. 13 to 3 run in the end of the first half, and then a 17 to 3 run to start the second. That buried them in that game. And for Louisville, they got to maximize their size. Offensive glass getting inside. Georgia Tech had trouble with Duke's size. So uh, let's see if Kenny Payne and his group can get on the offensive glass a little bit. We had a great conversation with Kenny Payne at the shoot around at the practice facility today. And it's certainly been a challenging season. I guess that's a good way to put it in his first year. But he says the guys are anxious for success. They're hungry. They want it. And we may see a, a new player in the Horizon Titan, Emmanuel Okorafor, who has really done a nice job for them. And uh, he's out on the floor right now. Just his second game, he's out of the NBA Academy in Africa, which is located in Senegal. One of the top players to come out of that facility. More with the miss. Lands leaping for the rebound, and here is L. Ellis. Yeah, cool for it. He plays with a lot of energy, and if he's had issues, it's, he's used to playing a more physical band of basketball, and he had four fouls in the Notre Dame game in only 18 minutes. And he's going to get five. He's going to call for the offensive foul there. Okorafor had eight points, three of five from the floor at Notre Dame in his first action in a Louisville uniform. 
And there you go. Becoming eligible January 19th. Lagos, Nigeria. A great program that the NBA has over there, and, uh, and so many great players. And I, I played against the team Elijah on uh, for a good portion of his career. Newt Bowl was a teammate of mine. A lot of great talent. Lands the steal against Kelly. And Georgia Tech was able to get back with Jalen Moore to swat it. We've seen some very good defensive plays in transition by Georgia Tech. Debo Coleman early, and then watch this one coming from behind. That's a clean rejection. Lance thought he had an easy layup. Great look from behind the backboard, the force of that swat. Louisville keeping possession. And here's this matchup zone that Georgia Tech plays. Very tough to work against. Trainer, Okora four, saved it. Withers, three ball. There he is. Okora four made that play. Saves it happened. And off the scatter like that, you get an open look at a three. Withers is one of the better three point shooting players for Louisville. 40 percent of the season, he's now made 26 on the year from beyond the arc. Well defended. The core four held his ground, and his teammate Withers grabbed it, and Louisville's on a 7 0 run. And they throw it away. And more than anything, Tom, it's those, it's, it's the, you know, the, the, the turnovers with really nothing to do with the defense, just a mistake that hurts. Okora four able to save it here, and Withers knocking down a three-pointer for the Cardinals. Jump center. Yeah, and it's touched everybody, and, I, and I'm a teammate of mine at Duke. Kenny Denard uh, is a 40-plus year survivor of testicular cancer, and uh, he's been very active in coaches versus cancer, and the coaches have been involved with it. It's good to see and expand it to the team now as well. Wonderful initiative tonight here inside the arena, and the Cards on a 7-0 run have taken an 11-8 lead. It is Georgia Tech basketball. Early number time to look at 14 to 5 advantage rebounding for Louisville so far. Four offensive boards, five points. Uh, that could be a big number for them going forward. Tristan Maxwell is into the lineup as well. He's got the basketball right now for Georgia Tech. Son of NBA veteran Vernon Maxwell. Shot clock down to five for Kelly who hits the front rim. They get it back out to Maxwell. A little too strong. Now here early on in the game, Louisville's length has really bothered Georgia Tech shooters. Georgia Tech two of eight from three-point distance. Louisville one of four. Withers has that three and a turnover. Maxwell. Trying to beat the defenders to the rim. Three of them collide. And a foul coming up as Maxwell fell awkwardly. Good to see him getting up. Here's the look. And uh, one thing, uh, Maxwell will be very aggressive when he comes into the game. He had 10 points against Duke. Uh, you know, good result there. He's had an 18-point effort earlier this season, so he can he capable of having a big game. And with Davon Smith out, they need somebody to step up. That's just the eighth free throw that Maxwell has attempted this season for the junior from Huntersville, North Carolina. The Ten points against Duke led the team. He was two of six from three-point distance, and he's got a free throw. He is in the box score for Georgia Tech. Two-point game, closing in on the midway point of our first half. Tom Wormy, Mike Javinsky, and our outstanding ACC basketball production crew with you from Louisville, Kentucky. Shot clock is inside of 10 for the Carts. No Ellis out on the floor, so... Does not get the shot away. Shot clock violation against the Cardinals. 
He really got put in a bad situation that time. Was not aware of the shot clock. Uh, I think, you know, Percy Miller at that point really needs to take over. Get something up on the rim. Miles Kelly, the leading scorer in this first half for Georgia Tech with five. Unable to get his shot away from the corner. Deep into the shot clock. Maxwell. Pirouettes and misses. There have been very, very few second chance opportunities for Georgia Tech. Maxwell with the foul. Jamie Lucky, Bill Covington Jr., A.J. Desai. Our officials this evening as Maxwell picked it up, as G-Man mentioned. So Ellis, number three, coming through your picture, is back in. Miller out. Now Ellis is going to be off the floor very much. Withers. Another three for Withers. Withers, one of the tri-captains for the Louisville Cardinals. And the redshirt junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Here's the thing, Tom. I mean, for, uh, for Louisville, less than 30% of their offense comes from behind the arc. Uh, but early here, a good trend for them, uh, especially Withers, seeing a big basket. Yeah, they shoot 32% as a team from three-point distance. Okorafor picked up his second personal, so he had to go to the Louisville bench. Javon Franklin coming out of the game for Georgia Tech as well. Fred Paul Bogatskis has come into the game for Georgia Tech. He will fire right away. And that's what he, you know, we saw him today in shoot around, and he has not had, he's had he played against Duke, uh, really has not had much time this year, but he's got a nice shot. He's only played in five games this season. Cards lose the handle, Maxwell. Gatskis again reloads and hits the three. And his teammates were really rallying around him today, and you. <laughs> Off of the uh, the bench, the bench is behind him. I think this uh, young man, especially with the injuries that Georgia Tech has, he can carve out some minutes. Freshman forward from Riga, Latvia. Lands has the bucket for Louisville. You know, scratch what I said about uh, tempo being a little bit slow. Both <laughs> of these teams seem to be committed to getting up and down this evening. Bogatkis, who hit that three-pointer last trip down the court, only his sixth game this season as Maxwell misses. And he showed no fear, and he missed his first three, no hesitation with the second. Ellis to the corner, and James. High arcing three. Howard trying to outleap Wheeler, and he did, and Tech will have it. So we've got a timeout of the court. It's a four-point game inside of eight minutes to go in our first half. Fred Paul Bogatskis open in the corner, launching a three, his first of the season. Protecting the paint, and it's brought to you by CPI Security, and it features the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, both of these happen on the break, too. Their team's chasing them down from behind in uh, two blocks, but this one uh, spectacular by Jalen Moore. Saving a basket there in transition. He blocked it with such intensity, Mike, it went off the backboard, hit him in the head, and then went out of bounds. And then Withers ended up hitting a three on that possession. We but it make, was. We should make mention during the break that uh, Louisville's actually got a new president, which uh, they needed stability, and Dr. Kim Schatzel was introduced to the crowd. and. I think a lot of things are going to, they, they had to get that position filled, and a lot's going to filter down out of that. First year head coach Kenny Payne was an assistant, most recently with the New York Knicks in the NBA, was part of a national championship staff at Kentucky in 2012. Also a former Oregon assistant. That whole coaching staff, very familiar with one shining moment. 
go into that as the game goes on. Certainly. A lot of NCAA championship experience on that Louisville coaching staff on that bench. Sturdivant. Gatskis, quick first step, finds Sturdivant. James the rebound. That's because uh, he, was, he was caught for the ball, made a nice play there. They're, I think they made a little adjustment uh, knowing that they got to chase him off the three-point line now. Well, the three he made, just his second of the season. That's Ellis for the three. Follow, bending the rim, and it's Trainer. Talked about their length in the offensive glass. Nobody got a body on Trainer. We saw Trainer at the shoot-around today. Exceptional leaping ability for number 12 in white. And Louisville really packed in defensively in that zone. Kelly, perfect form, and he hits the three. Good answer. Well, you got, you know, Kelly, who's actually seen a little bit bigger basket this evening, and Bogatsas, two guys who can maybe shake that zone loose. Eight points for Miles Kelly. That includes a couple of three-pointers on four attempts from beyond 22 feet, one and three-quarter inches away. Approaching the six-minute mark of the first half with the shot clock winding down for Trainer. Trying to work on Coleman. Jamie Lucky stepped in. He's pointing at. They're going to call both of them for. So it's Howard for Georgia Tech, Mike, and Roosevelt Wheeler for Louisville. Got tangled up there. Jamie Lucky talking with Bill Covington Jr. and A.J. Desai. They're headed over to the scorer's table. Jamie Lucky just trying to uh, clean a little bit up right now. And, you know, for Georgia Tech, I mean, they wanted to respond physically. Louisville was getting on the offensive glass. Howard, their biggest player. Right now, the advantage is 20 to 7 on the boards for Louisville. The officials still sorting this out. So Wheeler and Howard. Double technical foul. Yeah, they're going to re Louisville retains possession and uh, 2.6 on the shot clock, so they've got to get something up right here. But just off offsetting personal fouls. Ellis off the inbounds. Long rebound. Coleman knocked away by Ellis. Two on two game. Shovels it to Trainer. One dribble and he's fouled. Uh, you know what? L. Ellis made that play. Missed the shot, but immediately went into defensive mode. Got the steal and then the dish right here. You see him chasing it down from behind. Really good hustle play. Coleman picked up the foul for Georgia Tech. The reach in there with Trader headed to the free throw line. J.J. Trainer just moments ago, opportunistic, Mike. Yeah, let's say nobody gets a body on him, and that's the one thing that Louisville can do, get on the offensive glass. Great timing, great finish. You know, you, you look at up and down this lineup, Tom, another offensive rebound. Roosevelt Wheeler shrugging off the uh, double foul there earlier. Wheeler, who averages, Mike, 1.6 points per game. All you need is a bucket to get above your average if you're Wheeler. The number's going up. Defending Franklin. Shot clock winding down. Coleman, three-pointer for Georgia Tech. Well, I'll tell you, you know, five of their six made field goals are for behind the arc, and that's what's saving him, though, so, so far in this game. 
Dylan Debo Coleman, the sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee. They are one of ten from inside the arc. Withers, who has made both of his three-point attempts, tries to go to the interior and gets fouled. Well, this is a guy, you know, Debo Coleman had a big game against Syracuse, 17 points, 5 of 8 from 3. So they've got some guys when they get started are capable behind the arc. But I, I think this is a good thing for Louisville to keep on doing, attack the paint, get to the free throw line, get into the bonus, get Georgia Tech in foul trouble, wear them down with your size. You can see how vastly improved Coach Pastor's team is tonight with the three-point shooting. They came in as a team, Mike, 31% of the season, 14th in the conference. Averaging about seven made threes per game, 10th in the ACC. Georgia Tech, 5 of 12 from three-point real estate. As Mike mentioned, just 1 of 10 on conventional jumpers. Follow Franklin. He'll jam it for Tech. That's the second time um, amongst four white jerseys that Franklin has come up with the ball, and every, everybody just kind of shied away from him and let him finish. Javon Franklin, the senior from Little Rock, Arkansas. First year in the Georgia Tech program, and the Gatskis over the top of Jeans. See, you know, they, they, they worked in the starting lineup. They had him and Howard together, but with Howard out now, he's the five man. And look at this. I mean, he's just perfect inside position, stays with it. He was just up and he beat everybody off the floor twice. Great hustle. Franklin has three double doubles this season for Georgia Tech. Fouled in the corner right in front of that yellow jacket bench and that was withers well i know that withers has made a couple of threes in this game but that was going to be a tough shot and you don't bail him out with uh, a foul that's going to be three free throws that was maxwell yep. i mean it wasn't a whole lot there mike but enough and you saw the reaction from pastor second on tristan maxwell three free throws coming up for jalen withers Seventy-seven percent of the season for Withers hits the first. Now a message from Coyote Tractor. In my experience, if you work the land, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to have a little bit of optimism and a whole lot of get go. So Withers has already hit double digits in the first half, ninth time this season, and he gets two of three from the line. Six and nine is a team so far. Jordan Tech just one of two, so that number's starting to help. Bogatskis, three ball from the corner. Easy board trainer. 40% shooting in the first half for Louisville. 27% for Georgia Tech so far. Ellis in the paint. Shot clock winding down for Withers, and he held that follow through for an extra beat. Kind of gave us the Michael Jordan against Portland look over here, <laughs> knocking those threes was down. He, was he eyeing you down over oh, here? He was looking, he was playing string music, he was doing <laughs> everything. How about Withers now? Three for three from the three point atmosphere. Foul coming up against Louisville. Trainer picks up the foul. Withers is feeling it. Perfect from beyond the arc. Just steps into that three ball and knocks it down. Seven point lead for Louisville. The national championship in a Duke uniform back in 2010 on that staff for Kenny Payne. And so, uh, you know, obviously with his dad coming home, uh, 
over Miss Swartz for him, but there, there you see right there, there's uh, three national championships. Uh, Danny Manning with Kansas in 88 and Danny and the Miracles. Kenny Payne on that 86 national championship team for Louisville and Milt Wagner, who is the director of player development, a member of the 86 national championship team as well here at Louisville. They tried to get it to Withers. How about this team picture? <laughs> Look at number 42 in the back row. That was a lot of gray hair ago. Uh, <laughs> right behind Charles Barkley. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else than my man Rick Mahorn right next to him. Then you see on the front, all the way down on the right, Kenny Payne 21 and Derek Smith 18. Kenny Payne all the way to the right. Derek Smith, number 18 next to him. G Man, you were. Business in the front, party in the back back in the day, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> I've been in the back row ever since first grade next to the teacher in any kind of class picture. Man, that is fantastic. A great moment between the G Man and Kenny Payne at the shoot around today as Coleman knocks down a three. It must be great to see your old teammates like that. Oh, yeah, and Scotty Brooks, who was in that picture, was a, he's been in the, on the pro level for a long time as a head coach. and. Uh, you know, there wasn't much time for Kenny in his in his years in Philadelphia. I mean, Charles Barkley was our small forward, and Ronnie Anderson coming off the bench. That's Curry close to the rim. And I tell you what, and, uh, Sidney Curry, uh, <laughs> 21, he has really been on a nice little tour. His last 12, 8.6 rebounds, shooting about 58 percent. So he's starting to feel more comfortable. First points of the game for Curry. Sturdivant will launch a three and hit it for Georgia Tech. Uh, we had, uh, we had uh, this three point shooting is really bailing out Georgia Tech right now. They've made seven threes in the game, Mike, here in the first half. Curry able to gather in a congested area. Kelly grabs it. Tried to get around the defender, Withers. We made sure that Kelly could not get to the bucket. Curry should have gone up with that, you know, the last time instead of trying to pass it out. But here, every, in transition, Kelly sees an opportunity to get to the rim. Miles Kelly played his prep ball at Hargrave Military Academy in Virginia. Josh Pastner talked to us about in the last couple of it's the best of these last two practices that he's seen him in the last three weeks through this stretch. He had a nice run, Mike, during home games against Virginia and Miami. Back to back games, he had 20 points in each of those, and the game against Miami was a victory. The low in ACC win this season for Georgia Tech. Louisville still in search of that first ACC victory for Kenny Payne. Cards have won 12 of the last 13 in the series, and they are 10 and 1 against Georgia Tech as members of the ACC. Weathers lost it. Looking for a foul, didn't get it. Here's Kelly. Franklin trying to fill the lane. Maybe deserved a better fate, Mike. Lands with the kick out. James steps into the jumper and makes it. It's a three. Wow, that was a terrific play by Kamari Lance. Just took it all the way up the floor, drew everybody in, got his teammate a nice look. Louisville, four of ten on three point tries in the half. Both of these teams shooting way above their season average from behind the arc. Half a minute to go in our first 20 minute segment. Franklin lost the handle. We're going to get a timeout. Louisville will take it. 22.1 seconds to go in our first half, Mike Jaminski. Uh, this is the look they got through the ball. And this is where, really, where Louisville has been pretty good in this game out in the open floor. And you see, when you got guys, your front court can bring it on the dribble, kick it out. That was a two on four break. Might have, might have thought about pulling it out, but it's a good result. First three of the game from Mike James, who shoots 41 percent. 
from right. outside the line. And, and still, you know, with a four-point lead here, Tom, but Louisville, 10 turnovers to this point in the game. I'd say seven of them were unforced. And just miscommunication and bad decisions. You know, they, if they could just clean that up somehow, they'd be way ahead of the game. And to their credit, Georgia Tech, we talked about, they take care of the ball only three turnovers. Mike James, who just hit that three for Kenny Payne, at home against Wake Forest, had a 24-point game, a season high, and eight rebounds in that game as well. And you can see how he has stepped it up in the last seven games, almost 15 points per game. And that's against ACC competition, too. And, uh, you know, the thing that's really helped him is that three-point shot. It really sets up his drive and letting, allowing him to get into the lane. He's now made 25 threes on the season. And 16 of his last 32 for Mike James for three-pointers. Closing seconds. Withers. He wants another one. That's his first miss from three-point distance. Lands was coming over the top and a foul against the Yellow Jackets. He's going to get two shots. Second on Coleman, Mike. There's a look. Guys, are, look at him. Man. He's got a free run right to the front of the rim. Georgia Tech having trouble blocking guys out. Great look at it from behind the backboard and the foul against Debo Coleman. First free throws of the game for Lands. How about Kamari Lands from the free throw line, Mike? He's now 36 of 39 for the season. Well, and it, you, when he's had his double-figure games, Tom, is when he's gone to the line consistently. So that's a big key for him. Freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana. Cans them both. Averages just over five points per game for Lance. He's got four. 4.7 on the clock. Sturdivant races it up the floor. Does not get the shot away. 34. 28 at the break the lead at home for the Louisville Cardinals shooting 46 percent as a team in the first half and they made four to finish inside or if they're going to test that see if they still have the touch in the second half for Georgia Tech 10 Louisville turnovers but they haven't scored a ton off of it they've got to generate more offense there seven made threes for Georgia Tech overcoming the 30 percent shooting total in that first half and they are right in this one as they try to go inside. Withers deflected it. Howard tried to save it, but could not do it. So despite the turnover to open up the second half, Georgia Tech has made seven threes. That is their average for an entire game this season, Mike, for made threes. Yeah, and they, now just a two of 15 inside of the arc. So that's where uh, Louisville size really benefits them. James misses. Franklin grabbed it. The scoring discrepancy was a James three-pointer reduced to a two from the first half. Louisville had the halftime lead against Syracuse and at Boston College. The ACC games lost both of those as Franklin goes to the rim aggressively. A good face-up one dribble, a strong take with the right hand. Let's see for Louisville right now if L. Ellis starts to make his presence known in this game. A pretty quiet first half for him. Just four points. Make it six, G-Man. Yep. Yeah, he's he's got to start to generate some offense for this team. Missed all three of his three-point chances in the first half for Ellis. Hit that running floater. Um, lead is five and a foul call against Bull. You know, he's, he's number three with, uh, for a reason, he's the third member of his family with Elbert as his first name. And his dad at the airport, mom, yesterday. And, uh, but he also reminds me of another number three, Tom, Allen Iverson. He plays with a lot of abandon, especially in the pain area. Kelly, he'll hit that baseline jumper for Georgia Tech. And that's really great news for Josh Passer and, uh, and the Yellow Jackets to see him really get into a nice rhythm offensively. Had only five points in the loss at home against Duke on Saturday, and Franklin produces a turnover. Sturdivant leans into a three ball. 
Long rebound to Ellis. Yeah, and I got you know, they just wanted to test that, see if the touch was still there. I got to think that shooting, that three point shooting percentage is going to come down. And Ellis doing what he does. Crafty to the basket. L. Ellis for Louisville. Leading scorer for this team. Just over 17 points per game, fourth in the ACC. Franklin off the entry. James has his arms in the air. There was contact. First on James. Yeah, he just the one thing he does, Tom, he always keeps his dribble alive, and uh, he can really get the ball up on the rim in a lot of different ways. Could finish using that rim as an ally. Coach Payne has given him a lot of responsibility this season. You hear it in the shoot round all the time, Mike. The last person he asks about those various offensive concepts and defensive for that matter mm -hmm. is L. Ellis. He must know so it filters down to the rest of the team. And this, you know, the things that Kenny has had to live with, you know, the good news, L. Ellis, 100 assists on the year coming in. The bad news, 88, 88 turnovers. You know, for your primary ball handler, it's not a good ratio, but he, uh, well, he, he can make electric plays. Almost five assists per game for Ellis, best on the team. James, guarded by Kelly, and a foul is called. Second on Kelly. And that's the thing, if that matchup stays the same, that James really needs to be aggressive, attack Kelly, try to get that third foul on him. That's how Miles Kelly feels about that second personal foul. Ellis trying to thread that needle to Curry. Basket and foul for the cards. That was a tough pass and a tough catch at close quarters inside. Curry, though, watch this. I mean, there are a lot of jerseys between him and the ball, and a lot of times a bounce pass works better there with good catch and finish. Just two points of the first half for Curry. Franklin picked up that foul on the previous play. Curry finishes off the old school three point play. For the senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, a junior college transfer. Logan College in Illinois. Second year in the Louisville program for Curry as Georgia Tech keeps it alive. Jelly lines it up. Franklin tried to follow. Just mistimed it by a hair. That would have been dynamic. Over the shoulder to Curry. Looking for a jam. Second effort. Foul was called at the feed from that Ellis. That almost looked like it went through. By the way, Mike, that's the third foul on Miles Kelly. Here's the play. And this Curry, the, these two have really been working well together. Yeah, it was on the front side of it. Bit of an optical illusion. Yeah, I was looking to see if Franklin had come up through the cylinder to get a piece of that, but it was a, a clean on the other side. Sidney Curry, just a 49% free throw shooter on the season, looking good from the line. Gotta admire the intensity from these two teams fighting at the rim, Mike, with Franklin up there to contest Curry. And so far in this half, Tom, Georgia Tech 0 of 3 from behind the arc. That was after making seven in the first half on three pointers. Jalen Moore grabbed it, just checked in for Georgia Tech. Sturdivant on the run. Still just 31% as a team from the floor for Georgia Tech. Sturdivant, past the first defender. Out of bounds, we'll stay at this end of the court. Shot clock reset to 20 for Georgia Tech. Last four games, Josh Pastor's team had only shot 22% on three-pointers. They are seven of 19 on threes tonight. They're giving the shooters a lot of room on the three-point line. I think they are going to test that uh, three-point percentage out. Late in the shot clock, Moore. 
Ellis. Individual spin cycle. Couldn't finish. Too much spin. Moore with the hammer. Jalen Moore trying to bring the house down. Now Mike James in a discussion with Jamie Lucky. A really good game for them is Franklin. Nine rebounds for him. He's been on the offensive glass. Six points. What happened? There was a dead ball and there was a collision at half court. And uh, rather than do it, the only thing it could have been was a dead ball technical. But uh, Jamie Lucky decided there was nothing there. So no harm, no foul. Early on in our second half, so glad that you're with us for ACC basketball. These two teams have demonstrated they clearly want to come away with a win tonight. Incredible effort so far from Louisville and Georgia Tech. Shot clock is inside of 10. Ellis through the lane, able to regather. Withers, watch out with the three ball tonight. Can't convert on that one, and Coleman pulls it in. Yeah, Withers has yet to score in this half, still at 14. He made three three pointers in the first half for Louisville. Georgia Tech has lost seven in a row in the series here in Louisville. Well, that Withers Moore matchup, a uh, good one to watch here. That's two. Again, late in the shot clock for Sturdivant. Has to fire away, long rebound to Moore. Sturdivant, the cutter, and it falls. And he'll go to the free throw line. See, that's why you get your shot up on the rim. Good things happen. They got the offensive rebound right there. The defense is scattered, and it's just a straight basket cut. A lot of times in offensive rebound, we talk about the three ball being open. That time, everything opened up inside. There were no bodies to score. Moore got it back, trying to put it on the floor. Kelly. Oh, a little lucky. This they should never give up an offensive rebound on a free throw. Almost turned into three points for Miles Kelly, leading scorer tonight for Georgia Tech with 12. Before tonight, G-Man, the last time these programs had met was last year at the ACC tournament in Brooklyn. And that was a win for Louisville, 84-74 in the first round before they lost to Virginia by a point in the second round. And Virginia Tech went on to win the title last year, beating Duke in the championship game. We're inside of 10 once again. Ellis wastes no time. How about the spark provided by Moore so far in the second half? But if you had to pick something with Ellis, I think you'd settle for that shot rather than letting him get into the lane. Coleman around the edge, down the lane and fouled by Withers, second on Withers. See now, you know, in that, I, I think that's a wasted foul because you get Coleman, that would have been a tough shot for him. He's going left, you know, you've driven him off the three-point line, good job there, but then you put him here and he maybe gets into a little bit of rhythm. He's had a tough time finding his shot tonight. Six points. For Debo Coleman, two of five from the floor. And the two makes are three pointers. Two of the seven made by Georgia Tech in the game. All of those in the first half, mind you. Withers picked up his second personal. Coleman is 68% from the line, body of work this season. Another. <laughs> offensive rebound, a back tip off of the missed free throw. Start of it. Too strong. <laughs> Louisville just firing that ball cross court, getting away with it. Oh, and a no, big bailout there. I mean, that, that was going to be an impossible shot. Lands was fouled and earns free throws. He's he, two of two from the line. Tonight. You talked about his prowess at the line. He's the last guy you bail out on a shot like this. This one hits the side of the backboard. The 
deserves repeating what Kamari Lands has done from the free throw line. He's two for two tonight. Josh Pastor's well aware of his skill at the free throw line. Curry comes out. Okora four is back in. 34 and white for Louisville. And you know what? This is Kenny Payne showing some confidence in him. Tight game, second half, giving him some minutes there. It's only his second game, mind you. Louisville led by as many as seven in that first half and five at halftime. Gliding in is Sturdivant. And he has been terrific getting to the paint. That was just a take from half court. Double digits for Sturdivant, Mike. Ten points well above his season average of 6.3 per game for the senior from North Cross, Georgia. Well, remember, too, David Smith uh, out in this game, and somebody had to step up from the guard. He's the back. He's the point guard for this team. So Sturdivant doing a nice job filling in. That was Withers trying to make his way to the rim, and a foul was called against Georgia Tech. Jalen Moore is first. And he's the shortest guy on the floor for Tech, and he just splits everybody. He goes through four defenders to get that layup. Playing his 101st career collegiate game tonight. Transfer from Southern Cal, Kyle Sturdivant. Slamming it home. He didn't know it. the crowd finally told him to go to the basket. There was nobody guarding him. And he was like, all right, I'll go up and dunk. That was fabulous. Oh, Cora four. Drop of the hammer for the Cardinals. Sturdivant again puts on the brakes and hits. Big answer that time. Lands catch and release. Volleyballed around. Coleman was diving for it. James ends up with the ball and a foul against Louisville. It's going to be against Mike James. for listening to the crowd take it to the rim and that's what he did <laughs> rock in the rim that was fine but see i mean that's one and kenny payne said that's what he's brought to practice uh, that energy has really lifted everybody's spirits and then uh, i think the, he's going to be a crowd favorite here pretty soon <laughs> kelly side rim Just a two-point game. Tech 0 of 7 now from behind the arc to start the half. Cora for mid-range. <laughs> Kelly out jumps everybody for the rebound. <laughs> Tech doing actually a better job on their defensive glass, limiting second chance opportunities. Sturdivant had 18 points at Notre Dame earlier this season. A losing effort. They get it to Moore. And core for with the block. They send it back to Ellis. Touchdown pass. Okora for the catch. The shoulder. The turnaround rejected. Franklin. How about Louisville throwing football passes all over the court? Okura for listen to the crowd and he delivers with the jam. Big chip now since that point bit of an uphill climb for Coach Pastor. Yeah, and, uh, well, it's just a great team. Everything came together for that COVID year and uh, maybe should he could revisit that uh, the COVID mask served him well True. in 2021. They were 11 and 6 in conference play. They got one of the double buys. They were the fourth seed. They won against Miami and they had a forfeit against Virginia. It was the first ACC championship since 1993 for Georgia Tech. Our good friend, friend Bobby Kremens, the head coach at the time, he had taken them to the Final Four in 1990. And you know Bobby's watching from somewhere tonight. 
trainer out jumped by Franklin and that's tough to do No, Franklin's been a man inside in this half put back chance more couldn't follow and now both teams Mike have not made a three here in the second half taken back by Georgia Tech and Coleman just kind of wild action right now with both teams Yellow Jackets 7 of 24 with three point shots. All seven of those makes in the first half. Louisville's only made three three pointers in the game, deep in the shot clock. In this half, too, Tom, with many more opportunities, second chance opportunities for Georgia Tech. Louisville's got to do a better job with that, did that time. The first miss rebound. And Georgia Tech with more rebounds so far this half than they had in the first half total. Trainer. Moore up for the rebound for Georgia Tech. So once again, the Yellow Jackets with a three can take the lead. It would be their first since very early in this game, Mike, when they led 8-6 at the 14-15 mark of the first half. It's like a pass their timeout. So they've got two remaining, trailing by two because Louisville has missed its last five shots. We'll step aside for just a sec. Players of the year in the ACC. Well, and right now, you know, we've, we've seen this with Josh Pastner. Not afraid to use a timeout here. I, I, I don't think you like the way that possession was setting up. 12 seconds on the shot clock, a chance for his team to, you know, tie or take the lead here. So getting everybody on the same page they still have two timeouts for the half cards are trying to win their first game since they defeated Florida A&M in fact they won two in a row there against Western Kentucky and Florida A&M and have not won since well what has been an ally too for Louisville has hurt them in the second half it, Tech has not been shooting the ball while well. they've had 14 misses but gotten seven offensive rebounds and that's something that Louisville that's a battle they should be winning in this game. Sturdivant and Kelly both with 12 points to lead the way for Georgia Tech. Sturdivant hesitation dribble weak side here comes Franklin. Another offensive rebound, and Franklin has just been. Howard has not played much in this half, but Franklin has been fabulous in the middle. Eight points now for Franklin. Withers, a leading scorer for Louisville with 14, has not scored yet in the second half. Turnaround from Trainer. And if they can get him the ball in the middle of that zone, he's tall enough he can make that shot. Five points now for Trainer. They gotta just they gotta just face guard Franklin at this point on the offensive glass and keep him away. Tech trying to tie it up on consecutive possessions. War ran into a double team. Does not get the roll, but a foul was called. So Javon Franklin went in for the follow on this play. Now watch Pastor, top of your screen. He's in the corner there. Now he's get back on D. Look at him go. He's high <laughs> stepping it. But this is the thing. Okorafor turned around, never got a body on Franklin, and he went right to the rim. <laughs> Josh Pastor still with that athletic ability along that sideline. You know, and you don't see a lot of that these days, Mike. He's going with the tie. shirt and tie. Yeah. He's discarded the coat, but yes. Like you've got Earl Grant at BC, wears coat and tie. He's sharp dresser. Mike Young, Virginia Tech. It's funny, some some guys after you know the COVID, nobody was wearing coat and tie. Some guys came back. I'm, I'm a little old school. I like coat and tie. <laughs> Ah! 
Ellis against Miles. Nowhere to go. Need some help. Ellis has been quiet for a while. Withers wants it. And hits the three. Right in front of his own bench. Really nice play by James to make that. We talk about 6-5 being able to see over everybody. Withers comes alive with his fourth three of the game and first points of the second half. Career high for me, threes of the game for Jalen Withers. Kelly got it back and put it in. But again, that was Franklin that kept that play alive. Georgia Tech refusing to go away. James out of the corner, ran into a triple team. Withers stumbling. Jamie Lucky pointing in the direction of Moore. Well, the officials are still trying to figure it out, and we'll update you when we come back. What a game between the Cardinals and the Yellow Jackets. It's a two-point game. Let's see two. Going forward, Withers hitting that three, see if that gets him reignited. Yeah, that three by Withers is fourth of the game and first points of the second half. For Jalen Withers. Redshirt junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Played his high school basketball in Ohio. Ninth time this season that Withers has gotten double digits in scoring for Louisville. Ellis! Ellis will go to the free throw line. Got the crowd up out of their seats. You know, he's had a couple of those moves that he hasn't been able to finish. He gets, he picks up the foul right here, but just left Sturdivant behind. That's a pretty good take against Jalen Moore. So it looked like that's the that's the third on Moore. They had given Kelly a foul before the break, but they changed it to Moore. So Kelly has three, and Moore has three. <laughs> Kelly's got 14 points, third of it 12. They are the leading scorers with Ellis at the free throw line for Louisville. 78% of the season. Ellis to double digits with that free throw, Mike, after scoring eight points at Notre Dame. First shot defense has been pretty good for Louisville. They just have to get on the defensive glass. Four-point lead for the Cards. Coleman trying to cut into it. Can't do it on the drive. Better job there, and also with Coleman making him a driver. Don't let him get his feet organized. December 14th, that win against Western Kentucky. Ellis had 30 points and 10 assists for the double-double. I'll tell you, Sturman's doing a nice job on Ellis defensively, though. Late in the shot clock for Withers. To Wheeler. Power dribble. Point nine, and they get a foul going to the rim. Third on Franklin, Mike. I, I thought they might have overpassed right here. Just very fortunate to be aggressive. Good things happen, though, when you try to do that. Franklin has three personal fouls, also has 11 rebounds tonight for Georgia Tech. Wheeler at the line. Maxwell's coming in with Wheeler at the line, just 37% of the season. Coleman comes out. For Coach Pastner. Seven points for Coleman as he exits. Wheeler unable to harvest a free throw, and then a foul was called as Mike James. When, what uh, that hurts you two ways. One, he picks up an unnecessary foul, and they're going to be shooting one on one in that situation. That's another foul on James. That's four now. Both teams are in the bonus, as G-Man mentioned. 
Georgia Tech in the game seven of 11 from the line. Biggest lead for Louisville was seven in the first half, led by five at halftime. Four right now. We're going inside of six minutes to go in regulation. So great to have you with us. Wormy and Jaminski courtside. Trainer misses the turnaround. Miles grabs it. Yeah, one thing, Maxwell is not going to be shy about <laughs> looking for his own offense. Just one point in the game for Maxwell. He's missed his only three-point try. Shot clock. Down to five. Sturdivant. Individual effort. Well, what they did, nice job of keeping him in front that time, making him settle for the jump shot. He has been very effective getting to the rim. Now the oop. Dallas the trainer. Just the type of play this crowd needs. Carry that energy through to the end of the game. Maxwell on the perimeter. Shot clock winding down. He got bumped by Withers. Withers, who has a double-double tonight, 17 and 10. And how about this? Collaboration. Ellis behind the back line of the defense to J.J. Trainer. Wow, Louisville's got a whole host of players that'll go up and catch that and finish it to win. This is the thing. I mean, the last, the last front end of the one-on-one -on -one Georgia Tech had, they missed. They've got to convert these two. Maxwell, as we just talked about, he has not been to the line a lot this year. One of two in the game. That was just his 10th free throw of the season for Tristan Maxwell. Out of North Mecklenburg High School in Huntersville, North Carolina. Lead is five for Louisville. Four and a half minutes to go in regulation. Trying to give Kenny Payne his first ACC win as a head coach. Working deep into the shot clock for Trainer. Double on the baseline, couldn't find Wheeler. Miles on the run, Miles Kelly lays it in. Really nice concentration that time. Ellis hustling back, ran underneath him. 16 points for Miles Kelly. Trainer from the corner. Hit the three as it spun on down. Coleman ended up on the court. Right now it's a three it's, by it, trainer. Yeah, the, the, the shot's going to count. It's just I, it's going to be. Who, I didn't see who the foul was called. It was on the weak side. That trainer three was spinning counterclockwise down the net. So we need to sort this out, and we will when we come back. Again, it was trainer in the corner for three for Louisville. 57-51 cards. Again, it was Wheeler and Coleman who got tangled up underneath the basket after the made three by J.J. Trainer, And G-Man just got the update from A.J. Desai. Yeah, so what they did is this is going to be a flagrant one right here on Wheeler. So it's going to be two free throws for Georgia Tech, and then it will be their ball underneath, all the way down under, underneath Louisville's basket. So that play right there by Wheeler, four in white against Coleman, three in gray, deemed excessive and or unnecessary. Flagrant one. And so that'll put Coleman at the free throw line. And Wheeler, the sophomore from Richmond, Virginia, to that Louisville bench. And then as Mike mentioned, Georgia Tech will have possession of the basketball. Which, you know, 
that foul could loom large and you know you got some momentum with that three point shot and now the Georgia Tech's got a chance for a uh, four or five point play out of this. One of two from the line for Coleman makes it 57 52. Well, that's a couple of points. There's some points they left at the free throw line. I remember early on they uh, the first one and one they shot they missed the front end and then that one only one of two. Nine of 16 in the game from the free throw line for Coach Pastor, and they have struggled this season from the line. Only went to the line six times in the loss Saturday against Duke, and that was lopsided 86 43 against the Blue Devils, who won yesterday against Wake by two. Coleman. Shot clock is inside a 10. Sturdivant release. Trainer up the ladder for the rebound. series recently has belonged to Louisville they've won 12 of the last 13 three in a row in the series it's like every pass the crowd is yeah. gasping Curry lost it Sturdivant has it on the run off on the wing to Moore who got fouled and hit the deck Cannot, that's a that's a good foul in that situation more 70 percent shooter and uh, this is one of the few times Curry has had the ball knocked out of his hands but you know what right here take the hard foul let him go and earn it at the line that's the fourth on Withers and more at the free throw line Georgia Tech by the way Mike is trying to win here in Louisville for the first time since January of 1992 it's going back a ways. Yes, sir. Now they have a that's recent. A different, that's a different conference. Yes, they they have a recent win in the series. That was February of 2020. As Moore converts on the second free throw. Have not won here since '92. Trying to make some history. Kenny Payne trying to make history with his first ACC win. Putting it on the shoulders of L. Ellis and his Louisville teammates as we go inside of three minutes to go in regulation. Well, right, let's see how Louisville handles this situation. We're going to run some clock, be patient, but this team has to give themselves a little bit extra at the end to finish. James with a little extra from number one. And that's with him with four fouls. Just rising up, all kinds of confidence. Matching the largest lead of the game for Louisville and Hill Ellis reaching in against Sturdivant. First on Ellis. We talked about it with James. Last four games shooting 50% from three. Just rising up. First made three of the game for Mike James. One of three on three pointers and now seven points. Third of it at the free throw line. Ellis picked up the foul, trying to guard Sturdivant. Yeah, he, 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 he thought he had a clean pick and uh, maybe had a pretty good argument. Even with all this commotion, Georgia Tech hanging around you, man. The lead back to five. That's what it was at halftime, 33 28. Well, I'll tell you what, on those two free throws, Sturdivant did not look like a 57% free throw shooter. 14 points for Sturdivant. This is out of nowhere, Mike. Last three games, he's at two, four, and seven points. And in the absence of Smith, he was out with an ankle injury for Georgia Tech. Talking about on the year, he only averages 19 minutes a game. Ellis missed the fall away. Out of bounds. Georgia Tech basketball. Bill Covington Jr. was right on top of it, Mike. 
And that was the, the unfortunate thing for Louisville is they're outside of the two minute mark still, so that can't be looked at. On first look, it did look like it may have gone off of Withers diving for it. There were two Georgia Tech players in the neighborhood. How about this one between Louisville and Georgia Tech? Five point game with 2.04 to go. Here's another look, Mike. Yeah, it, it, it was close. It looked like Withers was the last one to get a hand on it. But again, I mean, look at you know, Sturdivant's there too, Mike. Watch the right hand of Sturdivant. Yeah, this team is this. These teams are combined one of 20 on the year, and then look at the effort here at the end of the game. Sensational effort by both of these teams, really. Under the circumstance, I'll tell you what. For all the for all the excitement in the crowd and the big plays that Louisville has made for Georgia Tech to be hanging in there right now says a lot about them. Kenny Payne's team with a five-point lead to match their halftime lead. Here's your upcoming schedule presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. Florida State comes to town on Saturday, Mike. Home game here, home game against the Seminoles. They lost at Florida State on December 10th, 75-53. Just imagine what the win would do for the psyche of this team, though. Kelly. Withers adding to that double-double total with another rebound. 17 points, 12 boards. Jalen Withers. L. Ellis time, maybe. Deliberate possession. Lands was driving late in the shot clock. Miles Kelly just picked up his fourth. There's a guy, you know, one and one, but still, I, I always, I always threw out the percentages in the last two minutes of the ball game, especially a close one. However, if you want one guy for Louisville at the free throw line, it's number 22. Four for four from the line in the game. This is something actually Sturdivant is having. He's got a little blood issue on his leg, a little cut, and they're giving him some time, which they, which they have been doing. I mean, that's a, you know that is a departure from years past. Everybody satisfied? <laughs> Crowd not thrilled. Well, they they wanted him out of the game. Uh, <laughs> is what they back wanted. In. Yeah. Predictably, Lands makes it. Pure. I mean, he just doesn't have enough attempts, Mike, or else he'd be number one in the conference in free throw shooting. Right now, R.J. Davis leads the league 88%. How about Lance? Six of six from the line and a timeout. Louisville. The lead is back up to seven. Inside the Yum Center. Now time for our Coyote Tractor turning points. And right now, those turning points late in the second half belong to Louisville. Here's Trainer first out of the corner, Mike, for three. Yeah, he's got a really nice look at it, and maybe you take a chance, but the 30% from him. But then James, the guy now you have to cover up. Uh, two big threes, big swing right there. Think about an agonizing minute and 29 seconds for this crowd and for that coaching staff and this team. Just means so much to both of these teams. And you know these players, Mike, they desperately want to give Kenny Payne his first ACC win as their head coach. As we mentioned, they, they'd had the halftime lead twice in ACC games, couldn't hold on to it. But you know what? If you look at their roster, and they've had everybody in that roster has had good stretches. They just haven't had them at the same time. Good point. In this game, they've been, you know, Withers has been fabulous. And, you know, they've had guys make 
big shots. They got three double figure scorers right now. Good balance, you know, in that starting five. If they can win, it would step, snap a 10 game losing streak. And here's the thing, it, it, you know, if you're Louisville, do you take a chance on Georgia Tech 0 of 10 from three in this half? After making seven threes in the first half. Yep. And they're probably going to need to make a three or two down the stretch here, Mike. The, only, the, the most important thing for Louisville is to defend without fouling at this point. They're going to press up a little bit, try to take some time off the clock. 129 on the game clock. Louisville two timeouts, Georgia Tech with one. This matches the largest lead of the game for Louisville. Up by seven. Sturdivant. Looking for some daylight. Foul. Sturdivant is two and three from the line. Second foul on Ellis. Well, and I tell you what, Sturdivant has been able to get into the lane almost at will in this game. It appears, Mike, that he's just gained confidence as the game has gone on. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's Josh Passer has been on a, he's, he's had the uh, search engine going all year long. We talked about it, 10 different starting lineups. Sixteen points for Sturdivant. He and Miles Kelly, who was about to check into the game, and now he's going no, to, he to was, the bench. No, it's, it's offense for defense sure. for him with the four fouls, so they're going to pull him out on this end of the floor, put right. Maxwell in. Pressure on the inbounds. Steal, Sturdivant, right to the rim. Follow attempt from Georgia Tech and a whistle. Uh, that was just a freshman mistake right there. He got nervous with the count going at him. Jumped almost and came in out of bounds. And it looked like Moore got a piece of that one coming in. And then he picks up the foul. First foul by Lance. And right now, it was funny. Mike James was signaling over to Kenny Payne saying, let me take the ball in bounds. Let's see if they change that. 17 points for Sturdivant. Five of six from the free throw line. In this situation, the guy inbounding the ball is the most important player on the floor. Bounces out. Could have been a one possession game. Trainer went up to grab it. Closing in on a minute to play. Four point lead for Louisville. Ellis lands, launches a three, and hits it for Louisville. What mistake on the other end. Kamari lands, makes the three. Georgia Tech turns it over. Ellis fouled on the way up by Sturdivant. <laughs> there it is, Ellis. They had him bottled up. This was a this was almost a desperation three. Holman can't believe it. First three of the game for Lands, and the seventh made three of the game for Louisville. And they've hit three critical three pointers in this second half with Ellis at the free throw line. Uh, that, you saw a you saw a pretty good snapshot of a freshman on both ends of the floor right there. Kamari lands, not getting the ball inbounds, fouling, putting it on the line, and then making that three. What a sequence for the Cardinals. We're not done yet, though, G-Man. 33.8 seconds on the clock. Timeout, Kenny Payne. And he wants to make sure everybody's on the same page defensively. 
After that Ellis free throw, the lead is now eight. It is the largest of the game for Louisville. With 33 and change on the clock. So Lance was on the inbounds at one end of the floor and made the mistake here with the steal by Sturdivant. Then comes in and picks up the foul in that situation. Very lucky that Sturdivant missed one of the two free throws. And then uh, this just a complete prayer at the shot clock. Sometimes my prayers are answered. Yeah, no. Sometimes it helps to. <laughs> if you don't know that you don't know. <laughs> Kenny Payne knows. He knows what it means. Well, wow, that, that might be right here. Pack it in. Yep. No drives, no fouls, five guys on the glass. Kamari Lance has a story to tell. We got the, maybe a little Kotskis, maybe a guy they look at. I know he, he's not going to be afraid to take a shot. The lack of three-point makes in the second half doing in Georgia Tech. Seconds ticking away. About a four-second difference. Game to shot. Kelly looking to drive. James came over with the help defense, and they have to foul Jalen Withers. Another rebound. That's 13 in the game for Withers. Everybody up inside KFC Young. Talk about this game, but how much pressure Louisville must the players must have been feeling to finish the deal here. You know, everybody's saying, oh, Georgia Tech's coming in, you know, it's a first win, and everybody's like a it's a done deal. We just have to show up. Not the case, but it looks like they've done what they had to do to get this game. So Withers is at the free throw line. He's got 13 rebounds to tie his career high. And now 19 points is one shy of his career high in points. So what a night for Jalen Withers. It appears that that's going to be enough for a victory for Louisville. But Gatskis couldn't get a three away. Coleman will fire. And that will do it. And Kenny Payne gets his first ACC victory. 68-58 is the final count and the respect between the two head coaches and Kenny Payne will allow himself a smile. He's got that first ACC win. Withers led the way with the double-double. 19 points, 13 boards. Three other players got to double digits. For Mike Jaminski and our entire crew, I'm Tom Wormy. Thanks so much for watching.